This morning, I'm going to talk about ONTAP at FreeBSD, um, kind of an update on where we are. Uh, I gave a talk pretty similar to this at the last Dev Summit a year ago. Uh, so I'll, I'll refresh everyone, make sure we're all on the same page, and kind of give an update as to where we are. About me, I've been at NetApp for a bit over 10 years, worked in ONTAP performance, and now in the operating systems group. I'm currently leading this project on FreeBSD currency. There we go. So really quick, what is ONTAP? Uh, it started out as kind of a storage server, basic you know, file services, but really now it's, it's much bigger than that. It's a data management solution. Uh, it provides fast, reliable, um, resilient access to your data, uh, various efficiencies and multiple protocol accesses. Uh, you can manage it easily and it really runs everywhere custom hardware in a VM in the cloud. Um, why FreeBSD? We've heard this from several vendors already this week. You know, why, why choose FreeBSD? Um, we have a history with, with um, uh, FreeBSD. A lot of our, I think, custom embedded OS back in the day was based off of FreeBSD because uh, no one really wants to write their own operating system from scratch. Um, but over time, we, you know, want to get out of the write the operating system game and um, by now you know in in today's on tap it really is FreeBSD. we have custom kernel modules and plenty of custom applications but we really we're running FreeBSD as the os um, we do customize it heavily and that's kind of what i'm talking about today and what what the point is of this talk so by the numbers because everyone loves numbers um, and pretty graphs that go up and to the right, except this is not the kind of graph that you want to go up and to the right. Uh, this shows, you know, the number of customizations that we make to the FreeBSD base system um, over time by release. No actual releases are on there because um, you don't need to know. But you can see that it's going, continuing to go up. Um, at this point, we have about 11,000 um, custom blocks. So that's either some we've changed in FreeBSD or some we specifically added to the FreeBSD source. And that translates into technical debt um, as we try to keep up with FreeBSD. Just real quick, so you don't get confused as I talk about uh, and use these terms. When I say baseline, I'm talking about the, the version of FreeBSD that we are currently synced to in ONTAP. Um, a NetApp patch is a block of code, so it's you could think of it in terms of C code. It's an if def patch uh, to the to the source file. Um, an upstream patch, conversely, is actually um, an entire SVN revision that's you know cherry picked on top of our baseline. And then rebasing is just changing our our baseline from one version to another. So how do we kind of stay sane um, with all these modifications and, and um, changes to FreeBSD within ONTAP. Uh, we strictly identify every single patch that we, we make. So that means wrapping it in a pound define um, and then also classifying those patches uh, to determine whether or not it's something that is you know, proprietary to NetApp, uh, if it can be upstreamed, if it is a customization of some you know, SVN that needs to be brought back in, et cetera. This is a rough breakdown of those classifications on the right. Uh, I personally believe that the 47% classified as NetApp IP is, is uh, a little high, uh, but that's, that's education work within, within the ONTAP engineering group to, to really figure out uh, what is our core you know, value add that we don't want, you know, what's our secret sauce we don't want to give away and, and what can be given out uh, to reduce our overload overhead. Um, we also have a bunch of tooling. So we have a database that tracks our FreeBSD baseline plus the upstream patches that we've cherry picked on top of it. We have tools to help rebase our NetApp patches from one version to another. And then we have a lot of tools that validate the baseline and patch, you know, upstream patches that we've cherry picked are the only thing that's, that's in the file. Um, we don't want to you know, let other content sneak into the source code and not know where it came from. 
because when it's time to merge forward, uh, it can become a big problem. Uh, one thing to note here is that we do have a very robust and mature development infrastructure within NetApp. Uh, we rely on it um, quite heavily in, in our development process um, for FreeBSD. Whether it's uh, a build infrastructure or testing infrastructure, it's, um, it is robust and it's, it's very nice to have. So going forward, um, you know, talking about how do we kind of live on head, this is a, uh, significantly based on um, the work that Netflix has done and, and shown to you know, prove to work in production. Um, I highly recommend everyone to go watch Jonathan Looney's uh, reflections on running FreeBSD head in production. It's a presentation he gave, it's on YouTube. Uh, We've, we've talked with them and, and worked with them to, to, to learn from, from their experience and figure out how we can do the same thing for ONTAP. So really what this means is that we are on the tip of the head branch, um, you know, roughly six to 12 weeks behind FreeBSD, um, you know, current is, is where we would like to be. Um, we don't have to jump from one stable branch or release branch to another which just is a painfully long process. Instead, we could just kind of incrementally walk forward as FreeBSD walks forward. And that continuous um, incremental merging allows us to do it more frequently, um, and it allows us to do it with uh, fewer resources, which uh, means that we can spend time doing more interesting things than just merging. Um, the, the key, I think, is automating. <laughs> got to automate all the things. And I put it there three times because it really is uh, important. We don't want to spend time doing mundane tasks like, uh, you know, Git merge, whatever you might call it for your revision system. But you want to, to spend the time doing the hard things, you know, figuring out how to integrate, uh, you know, the, the new feature, um, add, add new functionality, do, do things that are actually interesting and not just code maintenance. So we, we expect the tooling and the automation to merge, to build, to test, to review it, and even submit it. Um, we're not there yet. Right now, we obviously have tooling for, for doing, uh, for bringing the patches in and, and doing the rebasing. We have tooling for building and testing. Uh, but you know, there, there are things that we can do to automate the process and really reduce the overhead for the, the team that's, that's doing this work. Um, and the, the second or you know, fourth on this slide, but really the, the second side to this equation is reducing the amount of technical debt we have. To me, all patches are technical debt, even if it's proprietary and value add, it's still technical debt because we have to carry it um, forward constantly. So we, if we're living six to 12 weeks behind FreeBSD, we shouldn't really have any upstream patches that we've cherry picked on top of that. Um, perhaps we will, you know, because we don't want to sync forward to, you know, the current, you know, latest uh, revision just to get a bug fix. So obviously there will be op opportunity for, for having some upstream patches, but they should be um, pretty minimal. Um, as far as minimal NetApp patches, this is where the definition of minimal can be stretched. Uh, right now we're in the, the tens of thousands of patches. So if we can get down to uh you know in the in the low thousands then then i think we're we're hitting success um, and that just means that we have to change how we customize FreeBSD, um, as in we we don't customize it or we push a lot of our customizations upstream um, or we just figure out better ways you know refactor the, the code we have to not be so integrated so fundamentally, what I'm talking about is these two things. It's merging to the head of line, to the tip of head, uh, and reducing our NetApp patches. So this is an iterative process. And I want to kind of give you guys a, uh, a, a peek into how we've done it, where we've seen success, and where we've seen challenges. Um, so you know, what we're talking about, like I said, is incrementally walking the ONTAP baseline forward on head. What we've settled on is about three week sprints, one person ish teams and one week ish chunks. And there's all they're all ished because reality is reality. 
Um, our goal is to be able to do six week, um, six weeks of, of SVNs um, and to do that within three weeks. So roughly twice the speed of, of normalcy so we can get caught up. Uh, right now we're about two years behind if you look at our baseline. So um, we started this process uh, at the February 2018 baseline and we're currently uh, at July 2018. And if you're good at date math, which I'm not, so I've done it already, um, that's about five months of, of progress, five months of merges uh, within eight months of work, which again, if you're good at math, that's a negative velocity. So we have to speed up. Um, and that's, that's one of our challenges is figuring out how to improve our process and improve our um, collective knowledge to do this better. Uh, we've, we found, we started out with three person teams and found that it's, it's a fairly uh, single threaded uh, operation and one person driving it is, is kind of all that we need. We have um, an additional team uh, member to do some work kind of on the, the sidelines, but for the most part, it's one person that's doing this, which is um, honestly a, a big improvement from how the big, you know, what I would call forklift merges from going from stable ranch to stable ranch used to be where it took, you know, uh, several dozen members to, to get that done. And it took a year to do it. So the, the success of this approach so far, we found that it, it works well with um, both senior and junior engineers, varying degrees of experience in previous D. Um, everyone is able to successfully do this continuous merging. Um, the tooling has been very helpful. Uh, we do rely very heavily on what I call an auto heal infrastructure, auto heal layer, where you know at NetApp, when you check in code into ONTAP, there's a whole suite of things that happen to verify that the code is good. And if anything is detected as being bad, we bisect it out automatically. Um, and so when you check out a uh, version of the ONTAP development branch, you can be confident that it's going to work. So for our, our project here in, in getting to FreeBSD current, you know, it's something that we depend on. We don't have to worry about doing, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tests for every check-in. We do our due diligence, we check it in, and if something's bad, it gets backed out, we fix it and check in it again. Um, and the other thing that we found is working well is when we run into a revision that is causing us problems, maybe it, it conflicts too much with some NetApp patches, um, or we found um, some failures during pre-submit testing, we can actually skip over it. So, you know, you can think of our, our rebasing as just cherry picking each revision, one after the other after the other. And if we find something that doesn't work, we can try to skip over it. And you might think that, oh, that's, that's odd, like how does that work? How can you skip something in, in the baseline? Uh, and it is a little counterintuitive, but it does, it does work. Obviously there are uh, some revisions that you can't skip over um, because if you skip it, you can't move forward. And that's actually the first challenge I have listed here that if the hole remains too long, eventually you'll find another revision that depends on it, which then forces you to create another hole and it kind of starts snowballing. snowballing. Um, so that, that's something we have to, to kind of refocus on is, is driving down those holes as quickly as possible. Um, another area that we are currently working on uh, improving is, is the, in, in our auto heal layer, you know, every, every team and subsystem kind of owns their, their own testing. And there are some areas that lack sufficient auto heal testing and coverage. And so we can't be confident that when we check something in that touches that area, it's going to be sufficiently tested. So that slows us down um, because we obviously don't want to be breaking things. There's risk there. And we have to work with those teams to either improve their auto heal coverage, come up with um, a different solution uh, for those areas. So, um, you know, our, moving forward with this process, we're gonna be obviously improving tooling, adding more automation because that will um, ideally speed us up quite a bit. And, you know, part of one of the solutions that we're, we're thinking about with these areas that don't have good test coverage is to kind of move those, um, those pieces of, of code out of the 
integrate it, the continuous merge process. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain that any better. Uh, ask me later and we can chat and I'll try to explain that better. So again, pretty graphs. This is the, uh, our, the green line is at the baseline. So the, the left axis, you know, y-axis is the revision, previously revision, and then the, the bottom x-axis is the time, essentially, it's the on-tap build date. And so this is you know, our progress of moving the baseline forward over time. You can see some long uh, periods of stagnation, and that obviously affects our velocity. Uh, but you know, if we have holidays, and we have um, branch releasing, and uh, or release branching. And so that slows us down as we stop making uh, continuous merge check-ins. Um, and to see that in uh, terms of velocity, you know, I, I define the velocity here as being um, it's a six six week trailing average of the number of SVNs that we have added to our baseline per week. So the red line is FreeBSD's velocity. Um, it you know hovers between mid hundreds to just under 200. Uh, and for in our ONTAP baseline velocity uh, kind of is, it's also very uh, up and down. But if we are able to achieve um, you know, in the high 200s, uh, 300 SBNs per week range of velocity, then we will be able to catch up in a reasonable amount of time. Right now in our current, you know, that, that far right, dot uh, on the green graph. Um, if we stayed at that velocity, it would take us you know, five or six years to catch up with the headline. That's just, that's not acceptable for any of the engineers working on the project, um, let alone upper management who don't want to be doing this forever. So that's, that's one half of it, how to merge to the head of line. Um, the other half is reducing our, our technical debt, um, the number of net up patches we have. So this process is, you know, it, it's what you would expect. We need to port the changes that we have from our ONTAP baseline, which is, you know, two years old, onto head, uh, build it, test it, do some internal reviews to make sure that you know, we're okay with uh, publishing the content, um, getting it externally reviewed, you know, so FreeBSD is okay with um, accepting the content, and then submitting it and bringing it back into ONTAP as a, as a cherry-picked SVN which essentially replaces all of our NetApp patches with um, the upstream equivalent. And um, as our baseline moves forward, they kind of get subsumed. So that's, that's the overall process. Um, what we've done so far, you know, it's a modest success here. Um, we have been um, engaged with a certain FreeBSD consulting company that you may have heard a talk from yesterday uh, on, on helping us get this process streamlined and working well. Um, they've, you know, in seriousness, Clara has been very helpful in, in teaching us how to think about open source differently and what kind of content is uh, appropriate for upstreaming. I mean, it's not an easy task, right? You know, teasing apart on tap from FreeBSD and figuring out well, why did we even make this change, you know, 13, 15, 20 years ago, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do. Um, but they've been very instrumental in, in getting this process moving forward. Um, you know, the number of patches that we've basically eliminated, you know, it's a little over 100. But considering that we have a little over 10,000 patches in total, you know, it's a 1% decrease, which is not not at all um, bad. So we have a lot of work to do, um, and we want more of our internal NetApp engineers to be able to do the work. So part of this process is, is building up the internal infrastructure and expertise to do it ourselves and not have to rely on just you know Clara or um, the, the grace of the community, but really to, to do this ourselves. So we have engineers from um, different layers in the networking stack and the operating system group all working towards getting commit bits. We've got um, some engagement with FreeBSD uh, developers for mentorship, um, and we are building up our internal infrastructure. You know, it's 
the maturity of the ONTAP development environment is really extremely ONTAP specific. Uh, I've mentioned before that you know all of our development and building happens on Linux. So it it's we're a little like a fish out of water when we're trying to do FreeBSD development. So building up that uh, the tooling inside to to make that uh, successful is is important and, and it's a big task for us. Um, but as we're doing this. ONTAP development uh, is continuing. Uh, you know, we don't yet have a good disciplined approach to open source software. Um, we our, our development branch is a monolithic repository and everything, all the source code lives in it and everything gets built when you build ONTAP. So the FreeBSD source is there and people are, uh, developers are, are used to just being able to go in and touch a file and modify what they want, change the interface, um, at a field without really any repercussion. And so we need to relearn how to do that. Um, I like to say, you know, taking our hand out of the cookie jar and, and learning to, to buy, buy our cookies with actual time and money. Uh, yeah. So the last thing I want to, to mention here, um, you know, NetApp has a history of privacy involvement, but since Peter Gray and, uh, tenure in the 2012-2013 timeframe, NetApp has, for the most part, been working entirely independently. Um, we, we recognize that active participation in the community is important, not just for the FreeBSD project, but for us. Um, and so we want to foster that connection. We want to build a community of, um, of other vendors or consumers that build production systems off of the head branch uh, and really have a, a dialogue, have communication and connection. Uh, so this is still up for discussion, but the, the thinking is, you know, have quarterly meetups to discuss the, the latest issues or disruptive changes, um, you know, share experiences and, and to learn from each other while living at head. So if you're interested, this is my email address. Please email me, let me know um, what you think. Uh, and that's it. Did not have the QA thing open. I don't see any questions, but if there are any questions, happy to answer them. Um, otherwise, thank you for the time. I'm looking to see if we have any questions on IRC or YouTube at the moment. Okay. Uh, it looks like there are some questions. So I'll try to look at it and relay them. Sounds good. So one question is, are there any specific kind of pain points you've encountered while merging? Yeah, I mean, uh, one you know, recent example is, uh, so our, our network stack is, is highly customized, uh, both in terms of just how we process um, a connection, um, but also just in, in the, uh, the threading model and, and locking models. And so when changes like um, during the BSD 12 timeframe, there was a change to the socket locking. Um, you know, it used to be just one lock for, I think, send and receive, and then it split out into separate locks. Um, that threw us for a loop because we accessed that lock and used it for other things. Uh, it took us a long time to, to resolve that. Um, or, you know, the epoch epic locking change that came in um, in 2018 timeframe, that, that's, again, throwing us for a loop. So it, it, things like that. Um, one of the bigger issues we've seen um, is related to IFLib and um, you know, the Intel drivers that depend on that. And in our testing, not finding high enough quality in, in the version that was available uh, and having to figure out other solutions to still release on tap with a high quality Intel driver um, while the FreeBSD, you know, essentially baseline, you know, even the current baseline, um, not having a, a high enough quality in IFLib. And obviously there, your know, networking is hard. It's a hard thing to test. And it's a hard thing to, um, to really make sure you have high, high enough uh, confidence in, in what you're releasing. So there's no, no blame there. It's just, it's a hard, hard thing. And so that, that was, IFLib was one of those things that uh, we sp that spent a lot of time on, uh, you know, fixing bugs and trying to tune performance and, uh, still release a high quality product. 
Uh, I see some other questions on the Q and A in, in Zoom um, from Kirk. Can you describe the sort of tools that you feel will help you automate your merging to head? Uh, so the tooling we have right now, it, it requires you type a command and say, you know, bring this SVN in or these sets of SVNs, um, apply the patch, you know, check for consistency, rebuild, test it. Um, the, the tooling does the apply of the patch um, and it can launch a build for you. But beyond that, it, it doesn't, um, there's no pipeline. And I think pipelining is going to help us because a lot of times it's, it can, you know, the patch applies cleanly, no problem. Okay, well, what's next? Well, now you have to go run the build command. Oh, the build can be no problem. Well, what's next? Now you have to go run the test command. So just very simple pipelining like that would help a lot. Um, but also the detection of uh, more, more uh, intelligent detection of conflicts. So the patch applies cleanly, but it touches a, a block that is NetApp customized. You know, we've, we've copied that block somewhere else in the code and, and customized it. Well, how do we detect that the, the non NetApp version of that block has changed in upstream and now we need to apply the same fix to our, our copy. Stuff like that um, will help us make, make progress, um, detect when the, you know, the, the person driving, the engineer driving the process needs to actually get to the terminal and do some work versus, you know, automating that pipeline to go from, um, you know, here's the set of SVNs I want to apply, build it, test it, submit it for review, check that we've gotten all the reviews without any comments needed, submit the thing. Um, that is my ideal. The whole thing happens um, with very minimal uh, intervention, human intervention. Um, I do have a Twitter account. Personally, I don't use it for much. Um, the question came from Sasha. Uh, NetApp also has a Twitter account, um, which is more interesting, but it's also more marketing. So uh, as far as technical content coming out of NetApp, uh, I'm not really sure about Twitter. Were there any other questions on uh, IRC? Yeah, so another question we have is, um, what do you think about the impending migration to Git for FreeBSD, and how is that going to affect your workflow? And do you do you think that'll be a positive effect or a neutral effect or a negative effect, or do you not know yet? Um, at a bare minimum, we'll have to update our tooling to accept um, Git hashes as a reference ID for a um, a change coming in from upstream. Right now, we rely on the SVN revision ID. Uh, but in term beyond that, it's, it shouldn't affect us too much. Um, now, saying that, you know, the way we currently use and import for basic content, we we mirror the GitHub repository and then we <laughs> ingest every Git commit into a Perforce repository, and then we use P4, Perforce to integrate changes from that import repository into our ONTAP repository. So it's too many steps, too many layers. Um, when we update the tooling to support git commit hashes, uh, ideally we would also do away with our perforce import repository and just do a straight um, you know, patch apply from, from the git diff into our ONTAP um, source tree. Is there anything we as a project can do as part of our migration that would make your life less painful? The migration for the, the git. Um, If, you know, I, I know I've mentioned this a couple of times and asked the question yesterday, and we've had discussions in email, if um, the project supported some sort of generation ID that is unique, um, that can be referenced instead of git commit hashes and is monotonically increasing, uh, that would make it a lot easier to do the work of converting to using um, git as the, the source of truth instead of subversion IDs. But I, I think that Technically, it's possible to do it either way, and it just requires more work, one way or the other. It, it's not a, it's not a half have to. Um, yeah, I, I personally think that it would be a lot better for all downstream consumers if we had a monotonically increasing uh, generation ID 
for for the the source code in base, but it's not impossible to do it without. Obviously, because there are plenty of other projects that do that. So I think that's all the questions we have for now. Um, so thank you very much for talking. And I think we'll go into our first break of the morning. And after that, we'll come back and talk about um, planning for FreeBSD 13, which is coming up in a couple of months. So thank you again, Alexander. You're very welcome. Cheers.